Welcome back to the People's Basics, the home of the Universal Basics. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about our month's theme of small business and how the Universal Basics help small businesses out there in America. Before we get into today's topic, we want to remind you all to join our community that is advocating for the Universal Basics. Subscribe here on YouTube as well as checking our description section down below for our Linktree link so that you can join all of our communities, sign up for episodes, come and give us your questions for our mailbag, and much more. So with that being said, we are going to get into why the Universal Basics are good for small business. The reason is fundamentally simple. Businesses are comprised of individuals and they need support to be able to actually start up and compete with larger entities. And there are certain costs and barriers to entry that make it difficult for people to form new businesses as well as stay in business. And so the universal basics in its notion of providing a guarantee of income and healthcare and all the other basic subsistence needs in addition to education are tremendously beneficial for small businesses because one, you are not having to bear that cost directly as a small business. The load is being spread across multiple entities so that large businesses are essentially helping to support small businesses with the cost of something like a health insurance or a guaranteed leave program. These basics basically enable competitiveness because it's starting not just as individuals having a higher floor, but now a small business has a higher floor. It's essentially said it's the equivalent of having all small businesses now automatically have the expenses covered for providing healthcare for their people. And that is going to be a big load off in the competitive balance of being able to get quality employees. Because a lot of people will simply not take a job currently unless it comes with some form of healthcare benefits. And so essentially in doing this, small businesses now have a leg up in being able to hire because that's one advantage that large businesses no longer hold over them. And furthermore, it's no longer a barrier to them considering doing more hiring and trying to expand. Uh, currently, there are requirements to provide this health insurance for your employees if you reach over 50 employees. And so this creates a lot of friction for trying to hire that 50th employee if a lot of small businesses have been trying to put it off. And so now those small businesses have no pressure to stay under 50 employees and can expand as much as they need to for their business needs. So this is just an example of healthcare, but them as an individual still has to operate. And most small businesses, like we here at The People's Basics, are not exactly driving massive profits in their first years. Uh, people need means to support themselves. And a lot of the times that means people need to have the ability to save up to be able to start a business and they need some amount potentially as income while they're still building it. A lot of people work a side hustle while they continue to build a main business. And so something like having a basic income would be a means of having this kind of consistent revenue stream. In addition to having guaranteed housing and healthcare, you as an individual don't need to have as much saved up to be able to support yourself while you're trying to take on this new venture. So this is a big help for the individual, but it goes beyond that too. You need customers and you need employees. A lot of people don't feel comfortable going, as I said, to these small jobs because they're not providing the benefits. Uh, they would love to have the ability to get into some of these upsides of access that small businesses can provide uh, compared to larger entities, but they don't have the security to feel comfortable there. Uh, so this is kind of a big driver of why for employees, you also want to have them educated. If you have a universally educated workforce, or at least having the guarantee that people can go get educated, you're going to have higher quality workers who know what they're doing and can provide additional value to your firm. Uh, and so you're, again, having this kind of raising the floor effect that small businesses need that helps them thrive. And likewise, all of these expenses for your customers too are now covered. They no longer have to worry as spending as much money on their healthcare or on their housing or on their various basic needs, like even childcare. They now have more discretionary income that they can now spend at businesses. This is why the original model, like Henry Ford even said, of raising wages for his own employees worked so well because it gave them more money to go out into the economy and spend. So that's another big reason why simply helping people subsist and have their basic needs taken care of is helpful for business. But what else do people need as the universal basics in business? 
Well, we need a government that is not trying to be overly burdensome in the actual startup process and actually is helping, you know, facilitate the exchange of information of what is required to legally be doing businesses. Um, and so to me, some of those basic services comes with making sure there's proper information for licenses and that they actually make licenses rather affordable for people or they have exemption processes where people can apply to get cost subsistence um, for these measures. Uh, there's things like the incorporation process, which can vary largely between states of how you need to do your filing process and the compliance to stay on top of things, as well as you need an agent for registration, which comes at a cost for a lot of businesses as an incurring fee of just doing business. It shouldn't be so costly to just operate as a business if you're not gaining a lot in profits and revenue and actually succeeding. Uh, but these kind of administrative layers require a certain level of cost from these people. Now, mind you, we should cover cost. You are going to need people who are processing these paperwork so that we can do levels of enforcement and have legal protections for these businesses. But the cost can be very high for certain groups, especially if you want to have people who don't have all this money saved up come together and start businesses. The cost can be prohibitive when they might otherwise want to be spending on the business itself. Then there are some key skills that are like needed for most small businesses out there that are kind of like a somewhat universal need across all businesses. You need some level of bookkeeping services. You need some level of legal services. And so you need someone who can kind of help you with this process because not everyone is going to need to specialize in how do you manage your books and how are you making sure that your business is compliant and has all the proper licenses it needs and that is upholding all the data laws and et cetera. We should have some consolidation of these types of services. These back office services should be part of our public service portfolio and we need to be rebuilding the small business administration so that it actually does these services for small businesses and you don't have to rely so heavily on state programs to try and facilitate the growth of small businesses uh, we are starting to see an actual decline in small business ever since 2016 and small businesses are one of the top job providers in america 97 percent of net new job growth came from small businesses and so we need to be supporting these entities and making sure we're supporting the people who grow them. And that we support, frankly, the access to capital that a lot of these people need to be able to start these new entities and that it's in an equitable, equitable manner. So we don't get this kind of redlining where certain communities are underserved financially um, because we need in order to have more access to becoming an entrepreneur, people need the ability to be able to get a loan a little bit easier. You have a lot of these large corporations get all these credit lines and even some of these banks get direct loans from the government very consistently. We need to be doing that more often for small businesses. We are not spending nearly as much as we should be on small businesses. Currently, government in its allocation of its own spending dollars currently does roughly 3% of all federal spend or all government spending um, when it needs to spend on business services and businesses goods goes to large businesses. That needs to change. We once had this thing called the Small Business Act, which required our government to spend at least 23% on small businesses. And we are no longer doing that. And if you want to really hear why that is happening, we highly recommend you go check out our other episode that we have here uh, with our interview with Lloyd Chapman, the president of the American Small Business League, where he explains what are some of the influences that cause that and how beneficially impactful uh, simply reinstalling the Small Business Act and repairing the Small Business Administration can be for America. But that'll do it for another episode here at The People's Basics. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. And if you did and you want to support our community for the Universal Basics, we hope you are subscribed and we hope you are joining all of our other communities that you can find in the description section down below through our link tree that has all of our links. Join us for an episode, send us your mailbag questions, follow us across social media, and make sure you're getting into our Discord. So that'll do it. We enjoy that you stayed here for another episode of The People's Basics. As always, my universal people, I hope you have a good day out there. And as always, I hope you stay classy out there. 